Hey, and welcome to the May PC build. This is the episodes where I basically build a PC for you guys at given price ranges. So this month, I know I've done something similar to it, but uh, my buddy, Michael, he is trying to build a PC in the summer, and his price range is between $700 and $800, and I figured, well, we might as well go ahead and get started and help him out. So he sent me his list. Uh, There's a few things that I felt like could be changed, and I'm just going to try and build what I feel like should be the best option for him to start off with. So, he is strictly against all most AMD products. Now, that just honestly depends on the person's opinion. Honestly, there's a reason Intel is more expensive. That's because it has more hyper-threading, but in the end, the most bang for your buck is actually going to be given to AMD. Intel charges slightly more just because of the name Intel. So it seems. So let's go ahead and look through all these. And first thing I always do. Uh, now obviously he's going to be stuck with a quad core. Because <laughs> if you're trying to stay in that budget range. You're going to have a quad core if you're going Intel. So four cores. Max. We're going to go over here to Intel. And then we're going to select all those. So now obviously he needs to have a certain amount of uh, speed for his CPU. And uh, to play some, you know, modern games. So we're going to go ahead and push that up to 3.1. And we're going to go ahead and find some of the best options on here. So right off the bat, you have the Intel Core 2 Duo. Oh, I should probably change the cores to a minimum of 4 and maximum of 4. And, uh, okay, so here's the i5 4460, which I believe is what he actually showed me. He showed me one of these, and I told him, you know what, dude, screw that. We're going to try and get a K edition. So, uh, yeah, but definitely we're going to see i5 2500k that's pretty good so uh, you know as we keep moving through here i told him right off the bat he should get the anything with the k at the end because you can overclock the hell out of it he didn't seem to be too much into that overclocking business so assuming he's not into overclocking then i guess there's not much you can do if you have a k processor uh you, you just have so much easier of a nose overclock so since he didn't seem to be too much into the overclocking idea um it's probably not something you want to do on your first build anyways and he was also looking through all of his parts finding them all on Newegg and I told him dude you got to go on here this website and it'll find the cheapest ones for you like right off the bat Newegg's the most one of the most expensive ones on here with Amazon actually being the cheapest which is kind of rare but hey so we're gonna go with the i5 4690 not the K edition but it's still pretty quick right there 3.5 gigahertz quad core so we're gonna throw that into the list and uh, next up, we're not going to be using a CPU cooler since he's not overclocking. He's going to keep it stock. And we're going to find a motherboard. Now, I don't think he was going for any colored theme. Because this is where you would start picking out the, the preferred colors. But, uh, and also, another thing. One of his cases that he picked out, he was getting all these closed panel cases. And I'm like, don't you want to show off your PC and get a, a, a side panel window? And then he, he picked a case without good cable management. So, I've been helping him out. And this build is really going to really come through and help him out here so the first thing I always do when I'm going to a motherboard here is make sure that I have SATA 6 gigabyte ports that's for sure I need at least two of those um, RAM slots probably four you know it's not technically necessary but that's just a good way to start it off and yeah then you can go ahead and look for the cheapest one as long as it's good I mean there's ones that have really good uh, ratings too that should be on there so trusted brands gigabyte sure 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 ASI MSI um, where did I say ASI? MSI and ASUS. Um, so yeah, any of these will do. This one's pretty good, actually. I think I've used this on one of the builds before. Yeah, this is the one I used on my, my dad's build, I believe. So this one, or... But I don't know if he wants to go MSI with this build. Um, you know, I, I feel like this one's actually pretty good. The Anniversary Edition. I've heard good things about this one that is for sure um, let me check it out a little bit I'm gonna make sure it's the the one I'm thinking of real quick so it's the one if I go to new egg real quick I can go ahead and actually look at uh, the bigger version of it I guess you could call it okay yeah so four slots there onboard memory too that's pretty cool uh, he won't be using that though so it looks like uh, yeah it's got a PCIe slot there but I'm gonna go back Make sure that I have checked off um, the PCIe slot. That one's for sure that needs to be on there. So after further consideration, I decided to go with the BioStar, which is actually the one I'm using in the PC right now. It's pretty good. Uh, they're really well organized, so this is it. Right here, you get your PCIe slot. You get four uh, slots for RAM, uh, onboard memory, and all that good good. And uh, obviously for Intel. So yeah, we should be good. 
So yeah, next up on the list here, we're going to be going with our memory. So, the memory he said he only wants to go with 8 gigabytes, and I told him, alright, dude, that's fine. We're going to pursue with 8 I always recommend 16, but people always say, you know what, you don't need more than 8. So, uh, now if he wanted to go for faster memory, he could go for 2400 uh, DDR3, but he's sticking with the basic 8 gigabytes. So, uh, and I'll also keep the price down, that's for sure. And then we're also going to come over here and select 8, 8. And uh, then we're going to pick the cheapest one on here. I'm trying to keep him at a cheap build. If you can get the same specs as the PC he built earlier and for a cheaper price, then why the heck not? So, uh, wow, this is the cheapest I've ever seen it. Holy crap. Why are these so cheap right now? Oh, it's because they're the really generic kind. But you know what? Who freaking cares? Uh, the cheaper, the better. I don't care what RAM looks like. If you're not going for a specific color theme, just stay out of it, you know? Um, okay, so let's see. You know what? I that's one stick of eight. I think we should have got two sticks of four. So let me let me just try that real quick. I feel it just f makes me feel more comfortable when I see two sticks in there. Yeah. Okay. So the cheapest one here, eight data. I don't know if I trust that one as much. The Patriot Signature, that's a really good one. That, that I've heard some good things about those ones. So, uh, okay, so next up, we're going to pick the storage. He said just basic one terabyte, no SSD. So he's really keeping it minimalistic, but going for the best specs you can get at the cheapest price. And hopefully I can, uh, you know, influence this. So I'm go for a minimum of one terabyte here. Obviously, it's going to be that uh, Western Digital up there. And then we're going to go ahead and throw in our video card. So, he didn't want, uh, he was originally going to get the 750 Ti. I told him, you know what, just put in a, something a little bit better than that. And, uh, because, you know, NVIDIA at the end of the year in fall, they're actually having their new cards revealed. So, in terms of GPU, I think he could either upgrade or stay at 750 Ti and then upgrade when the new ones come out. Or he could just get a mid-grade one because the prices are going to start coming down with the new ones coming out. So, that being said, I'd like to encourage maybe a GTX 960 so you can upgrade maybe a year after the new cards come out. This is the 960, you're completely okay. 960, 970, and uh, yeah, that's, we're just going to go through that right now. I'll pick the cheapest one on here, it's probably the 960. Yep, straight off the bat now, I think it's just the red and black one, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the red and black one, so I don't know if he cares exactly what his GPU looks like I don't, I don't know but uh, yeah that being the cheapest one I would say we could throw it in there unless he wants to go and that's a few dollars more to not have it red yeah this one's pretty compact so you know what? I'm gonna throw this one in there that one is pretty good GPU there and then uh, for the case for the case so we're at only 517 bucks that's sweet so uh, the case I told him you, you should get a window he said it doesn't really matter so I say okay how about good cable management and that's what's up so I'm gonna go with five star builds here and then uh, make sure that they are pretty Gucci so the cheapest five star build is up here $27 I don't know if that's difficult it's difficult but we're gonna go with a mid tower so he has some more room to work with uh, fractal design core this one will be good that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, 60 bucks on Newegg. Let's go ahead and check it out. Make sure. Yeah, okay. Okay, that, sh that should be fine. Yeah, I think this is actually one of the ones he was looking at. I like to recommend that you have good cable management for these things, though, that's for sure. Okay, so after further consideration, I actually went ahead and went with this one, the Corsair Carbide. Now, this one is actually a really good case because if you look specifically in the back, it does give you room for cable management, which is crucial to your success. And then, in addition, it does have a side panel window. It looks really nice. Like, that is a really good case. I might have to pick one up for myself in the future. Um, provides you with a lot of uh, airflow, which is crucial here. And, uh, yeah, that should, that should be pretty good. We're going to go with that one right there, and it's actually relatively cheaper than I had expected. So, our build only coming in at $547 so far. Um, our estimated wattage is 280 watts. I always like to double whatever they say it is. So, he go with a 430-watt power supply easily with this build. But, uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give him a little bit more than that. So, let's start it off at 500. Uh, Semi-modular, of course. And, uh, I like to keep it 80+. plus bronze all of those 
Itty goodies. 80 plus bronze is the minimum here. So, and then we're going to go ahead and find the cheapest one at $480. Um, 600 watt power supply here to kick it off for 50 bucks. Honestly, yeah, I think that might just be our smartest decision there. Uh, look at this for 150 watts more and like three dollars more, you can get a better deal. It's four dollars more, so yeah, obviously, we're gonna go ahead and get that one. It's one of the best power supplies out there. Um, Corsair semi modular, and then I don't know if he's gonna need an optical drive. I don't think he will. We're in a modern day and age, we download everything, so that shouldn't really be that necessary. And then in terms of the operating system, you guys, this is uh, something I can get you guys for pretty cheap, like 30 bucks. And he had his on here for like almost $90. I could get it for 30 bucks. It's like a third of the, the regular price. So add 30 bucks onto this build and you're gonna get about $630. Uh, the base total, that's after a $50, $55 worth of mail and rebates and $14 of shipping, so his base total will be $600 and uh, about $60, bucks, which is a lot cheaper than the $800 build for about the same specs here. Um, just by, you know, kind of messing around and figuring out what's cheap and what's not, you can actually uh, find one of the best builds possible. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and call this one Mike's Build. So uh, anyways, if you guys are interested in this one and you want to uh, see how I'm going to get it cheaper for you guys, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and we will see you in the next one. Sweet.